Huang Li Shu is a famous lacquer artist from Taiwan. The Kunst is where she creates her works and teaches her students. It's now spring. There's a lot of green out in the plants and it's very beautiful. Inside the garden there are many lizards. This is Typha latifolia, which used to grow all over the pond. Its flower resembles the shape of a candle. It's lovely. This is a native Taiwanese plant, Mufa pumulum. We just call it the water lotus. There's a Taiwanese song named the lonely flower. It's about the water lotus. I come here every day. I know the flowers and grass will be waiting for me. With every tender new leaf, I am moved. Every day I observe the subtle changes of the flowers. The red flower and white flower bloom in succession. This touches my heart. My works are usually modeled after the things I appreciate. Nanto County is located in Taiwan's central region and is the only county in Taiwan without access to the sea. Nanto's climate is humid with abundant rainfall, making it suitable for growing areca catechu, banana and corn amongst other things. The beautiful Ryuatan pool is also situated here. Lacquer trees were first planted in Nanto before any other place in Taiwan. Large tracts of lacquer trees grow in the mountains. This is a lacquer tree. First cut an opening in the trunk. Then thrust a clamshell into the tree. The sap will flow into the clamshell. Usually, before setting out, I'll take an oversleeve and a pair of gloves. They provide extra protection. There are lots of branches here. It's easy to get scratched. This knife is specially designed for collecting sap. People from outside the profession usually don't come across these. It's exclusively used by sap collectors. This bucket is fastened to the waist. This scraper is made by cutting off the edge of the areca catechu leaf. When we collect the sap, we're going to hold the clamshell like this and draw it towards our waists. Do you see this? This is a perfect match. Keep scraping the clamshell until there's no sap left. Lacquer tree resin or raw lacquer is the main material used for lacquer art. It not only keeps utensils from corroding, but it also beautifies them, softening them and giving them a bright luster. The appropriate time to harvest sap in Taiwan is from April to August. The sunlight is sufficient in summer enough for moisture to evaporate quickly, thus allowing the lacquer tree to produce sap of top quality. The best time generally to collect sap is just before dawn. With one lacquer tree, one can only expect 200 grams of sap. The sap is to the tree what blood is to man. It's so precious that we have to cherish it. I would like very much to collect all of it. 
I daub every bit of it on these boards. Little by little, rich colored mosaic pictures would come into being. This used to be a crystal ball, but Huang Li Shu and her students daubed leftover lac on it and made it look like an Easter egg. Born in 1949, Huang Li Shu studied fine arts at university. In 1976, she started working at the Taiwanese Provincial Handicraft Research Institute. At that time, export of bamboo weaving products was a booming industry in Taiwan, and Huang Li Shu was mainly engaged with developing bamboo products. Bamboo skin and bamboo timber have different properties. Bamboo skin is a common material used in bamboo weaving. However, bamboo timber is rich in moisture and carbohydrates because it has lots of vascular bundles, which makes it an ideal place for the growth of worms and mildew. But what if I wanted to make use of bamboo timber? I would first smear it with lacquer, then it would have a hard texture. What even Huang Li Shu is not aware of is that her idea to smear bamboo strips with lacquer is going to lead her into a whole new world of color. The Chinese people were the first in the world to utilize lacquer. Over 6,000 years, the lacquer art developed different styles and techniques. Taiwanese lacquer art developed only 100 years ago. Before that, there were no lacquer trees in Taiwan. Lacquer ware was mostly purchased from the Chinese mainland or made in Taiwan by lacquer craftsmen from Fuzhou. The art didn't take root until lacquer trees were planted in Taiwan in the early 19th century. Taiwanese lacquer art has a very short history. By the time lacquer art arrived in Taiwan, it was able to readily borrow from the established stars of the Chinese mainland, Japan and Vietnam, and integrate them with its own path and distinctive lacquer art history. After spending some time grappling with lacquer art on her own, Feng Li Shu decided to seek out and learn from a master. Chen Huaqing began working with lacquer art at the age of 13 and spent the ensuing 60 years with it, day in and day out. He's one of the few remaining lacquer artists of the old generation in Taiwan. His works have absorbed the essence of Japanese lacquer art and applied its lessons and stylistic cues to traditional Chinese practices. His creations have rounded shapes, natural textures, simple patterns, implicit luster and are very much within the realm of Chinese folk art. When I first visited Mr. Chen's house, he was about to retire. I went there to seek advice from him. A lot of his own works were on display. I was astonished and deeply moved. I was reluctant even to leave his house. I really wanted to create things as beautifully as he did. When combined with a pair of nimble hands and a romantic and unrestrained mind, the primitive raw lacquer is suddenly endowed with spirit and vitality. Without thinking twice about it, Feng Li Shu threw herself into the ocean of depth that is lacquer art. She spent years learning how to make lacquer from a lacquer farmer, how to paint from a painter, and how to decorate from Chen Huaqing. After about a decade, she was an accomplished craftsperson. From 1987 to 1989, Feng Li Shu's works received first place at the three art design exhibitions in Taiwan. Her works never needed to be identified. A variety of approaches, including bamboo, wood, rattan, cloth, and pottery were employed in her works to enrich their expression. However, Besides her work, something else has seized Huang Li Shu's mind. In 1996, a revelatory piece titled On Transmission of Lacquer Art Practices was published in the Taiwanese newspaper 
United Daily News. I had a talk with Director Xiao at the time and proposed inviting Mr Chen to the institute to teach. Lacquerware was largely unknown in Taiwan during that period. Lacquerware techniques had almost vanished. According to Huang Li Xu, if more and more people get to know Mr Chen's work, lacquerware will be able to take root in Taiwan. In 1996, 10 students were invited by the Taiwanese Provincial Handicraft Research Institute to take a year-long class with Chen Huaqing. I hope these 10 students can do their best to learn from a truly great master. They are good enough for this. So in this one year, I will do what I can to help them learn as much as they can. Though Chen Huaqing was then in his 70s, he insisted on preparing teaching materials by himself and giving two lessons per week at the Handicraft Research Institute. Mr. Chen became like a father figure. Taking into consideration his old age, I'd cook for him every time he came and ask him to eat with me in my place. I lived in the dormitory at that time. It was very close to where we worked. The development of modern industry has led to specialization and refinement of industrial processes. Ready-made lacquer bodies can be obtained from the market. However, Huang Li Shu demands that her students strictly adhere to traditional practices. Traditional lacquer art starts with underpainting. The first step involves smearing raw lacquer onto the lacquer body to fill air pockets so utensils will not easily crack and go out of shape. Then gunny is affixed to the surface of the utensils. In this process, the raw lacquer can function as a binding agent. After the lacquer base has dried naturally, apply three layers of plaster with decreasing graininess to the surface. The plaster used is a mixture of powdered clay and raw lacquer. After the first layer is applied, wait 24 hours, smoothen the base with flint paper and then apply the other two layers. In order to add beauty and resoluteness to the work, black lacquer is applied. Normally, two layers of black lacquer should be applied to the base so that the appropriate thickness can be obtained. Black lacquer is the best quality lacquer. It has a fine and smooth texture. All the processes in underpainting serve one purpose, to make the lacquer body more durable and more beautiful. Apply a thin layer of lacquer to make it transparent. The first days are the toughest. It's not only because the procedures are complicated, but also because they require patience. Raw lacquer is a skin irritant and can induce allergic reactions. The students refer to it as being bit by the lacquer. When I was teaching, one of my students suffered a lot from raw lacquer. Wounds on both of her hands festered on the back. I was even frightened. But I ended up assuring her mother that her daughter would develop tolerance after a while. It just took time. Wang Pei Wen is one of those 10 students. It's been 17 years since she first joined the class, but to Wang Pei Wen, those memories are so fresh that it's as if they were yesterday. You were thin at that time, yes. I've put on more than 10 kilos. 
I used to get bit by the lacquer back then. We had a plate we'd made to record the lacquer's next victim. I was the fourth one. It seems I was born for this. Before I got acquainted with Mr. Chen, I had bought a can of lacquer myself. I then daubed it my table randomly. The lacquer didn't bite me. Lacquer can't be talked about without mentioning the decorative craft that accompanies it. The elaborate decorations employ colors, patterns, and materials to add beauty to the utensils. They boast a variety of techniques. The most commonly used one is inlay. Eggshell, mother of pearl, gold, silver, bone, and jade are inlaid into the lacquer. The special texture of these materials radiates with the natural beauty of the lacquer and a unique artistic dialogue of lacquer is developed. We know lacquer is black. Pure white lacquer doesn't exist. Apply eggshell with lacquer to the surface. Knock the eggshell out into chips. Then you get ice cracks. They're very natural. Affixing the eggshells needs patience and attentiveness. It usually takes two to three days to finish affixing eggshells to a medium-sized bottom plate. It takes lots of work, but when they're finished, you just find they're so tender and full of charm, like the feeling you get from a newly born baby. When the bottom plate is covered in eggshells, another layer of raw lacquer should be applied. The lacquer can fill the gaps between the chips and increase the adhesive force. Grind the surface when the lacquer dries out. We can't be impatient when grinding the lacquer. So we may as well say, lacquer art is a method of cultivating the mind. The color difference between the eggshells, uneven distribution, and the different intensity of force applied during grinding will all contribute to a rich texture and leave the impression of a skeleton of different shades. Chinese lacquer art began to spread outside China as early as the Han Dynasty. Its pure oriental artistry has enabled it to grow and bear fruit in Japan, Korea and Vietnam. Gradually, it evolved into established, regionalized lacquer art styles imbued with local characteristics. Its utilization of materials, the luster it radiates, and the story behind all the different pieces attract me a lot. Bamboo weaving is prominently displayed in Yongchun lacquered baskets, which to me represents local culture and distinctive regional features. For a student of lacquer art, you can't restrain yourself from the impulse to make one of your own. That'd be fantastic. I heartily accept your invitation and very much look forward to taking part in your lacquer art masterclass in Taiwan. It's going to be an honor to help serve this noble art and help with the continuation. These geese used to be raised by Mr. Xu, whose house is opposite mine. I can remember a time when one of the doors at my house hadn't yet been installed, and those geese, about four or five of them, would run into my house every day. 
My classmate complained that she couldn't get enough sleep. I asked why. She said that the frogs in the rice field near my house kept croaking all night. Also, she was bothered by the rumble of the water. She was just telling the truth. The frogs were really noisy. Then I joked that that was our midsummer night's dream. She'd put everything which caught her eye in daily life into her work. Due to this reason, her works have an air of tenderness about them and a common touch. I think this is why her work has become so popular. When the students arrived at the institute, they would first sweep the ground. The group whose turn it was needed to come earlier. Huang Li Shu has been teaching from the time the Chen Huaqing class began in 1996. In 2008, in order to provide a more ideal study environment for her students, Huang Li Shu had an idea to create a craft exchange space. That was the beginning of the Le Kunst. Generally speaking, craftsmen are hardly free from troubles. Craftsmen can never separate themselves from a heap of tools, cases and materials. They have to carry them with them all the time. So, a big space would be much more convenient. As usual, let's check and discuss your work. This one is already very good. While the color of the ground appears a little stiff, we can use blended loess powder and water to neutralize it. Huang Li Shu would teach her students various techniques to better display the beauty of the lacquer. The air pores of the plaster are basically coarse, so we have to apply another layer of lacquer onto the surface to make them even. Usually, each trace takes about two or three strokes. Colors can also be applied to the drawing by scattering gold and silver powder onto the lacquer. The uneven distribution of the powder can produce a different luster. Once combined with the lacquer, a hazy artistic beauty is apparent. After this, apply a layer of covering lacquer. This layer of lacquer is going to cover the gold and silver powder, so the more transparent this layer is, the better effect it will give. Covering lacquer can efficiently protect the patterns on the lacquerware, also a translucent and illusory appeal can be evoked. Generally, four layers of covering lacquer should be applied. Another layer can only be applied when a previous layer has dried and been ground. After being ground, the surface is fine and smooth but lacks luster, so it needs to be polished to produce a more mellow luster. Sometimes we also call this process luster lessening. After being burnished, the luster appears much milder. Touching it will give you a delicate feeling, like touching a baby's skin. The heat from the friction will soften the lacquer on the surface and give unique texture and luster to the lacquerware. A piece of lacquerware should be rubbed thousands of times before it is complete. After going through tens of processes, the base color will gradually appear and burst into a beauty of full variety. Huang Li Shu calls this the blossoming of the lacquer. The blossoming of the lacquer can be perfectly illustrated by this piece of hers. Under the seemingly matte bottom layer, unending changes are surging up. The sophisticated processes finally result in a luxurious and in-depth beauty. Lacquer usually appears as dark and lusterless. However, the base color will be rendered in different colors, but at the beginning, you don't know which colors will appear. It's something beautiful, worthy of anticipation.
A great variety of colors are obscured behind mysterious lacquer. This is exactly where the beauty of lacquer art lies. This analogy is akin to much of Huang Li Xu has experienced in her own teaching career. Though her career remains unpredictable, it's just this uncertainty and mysterious beauty that appeals to her most and binds her to the art. These works were all created by the students during their study. Every time they came here, I'd have them practice the basic skills and several simple techniques as well. The Lakunst has now been running for three years and has received some 50 students. The finish of the course marks the beginning of the next stage of your life. The days I spent here have benefited me so much that I'll likely be grateful all my life. Those words were written by Wang Peiwen 17 years ago upon completion of the Chen Huaqing Masterclass. After finishing the class, Wang Peiwen kept honing her skills. Now she's an expert specializing in antique repairs. At that time, Mrs. Chen was like a surrogate mother. She'd take care of everyone and every aspect of daily life. All my classmates lived in the Research Institute dormitory back then. She was so thoughtful and considerate every day. As a teacher, Mrs. Chen is generous. Some teachers commonly hold things back in fear that they'll one day be surpassed by their students. But Mrs. Chen operated totally contrary to this. So we interacted with Mrs. Chen in a rather frank way. Mrs. Chen taught us without reservation and we learnt with our hearts. Indeed, far more craftsmen are exclusive with their techniques and methods. This is the means by which they make a living. Life is not easy. Your students will probably become your competitors in the future. As for me, I am a regular employee of a public institution. I don't need to sell anything. I'd rather invest my energy in research work. Teaching work is good. You probably want to trace the pattern with another four or five strokes. Then the layer will come out. Touch it. Good work. You've got really good texture. At that time, every time we had a meal together, some students would post the pictures on Facebook, hoping the students who were not with us at the meal would see those pictures and realize they had missed something. It looks delicious. In the ocean of the crowd, one could easily eat with anyone, but we traveled a long distance to have a meal together. This was a precious occasion belonging to us. That's tempting. The meal's ready. Come and eat. I'm glad they were here with me. We live together, work together. I could share a meal with them. I was never too lonely. A teacher always has lots of memories to recall. On these cards are some things the students wanted to say to me. So they titled it, Things We Want to Let You Know. It's different from the gifts you might buy from a store. It's also something warm to remember. This big card was also made by the students. At the end of every semester, they'd write something they wanted to say on it. In this glass bottle, there are some dragonflies. 
On the cap, there are some swallows. They wrote, Dear Teacher Huang, we couldn't thank you more for what you have done for us over the last semester. It's your instruction and encouragement that makes our special job possible. Though Huang Li Xu and a few other Taiwanese lacquer artists have been striving hard to pass on their lacquer art, one common concern never drifts from their minds. What concerns us is whether the students will be able to sustain themselves with these skills. Is there still a market need in this society? It's a practical concern. Bamboo products, weaving products, lacquerware and wood carving are all losing their advantages in the market. They're on the verge of becoming extinct. However, we must figure out a way to keep them alive. We need to excavate the hidden demand potential, but this work cannot be taken on by any single individual. Every piece should possess a unique moving force. That is the prevailing concept in the Taiwanese craft community. In order to promote the craft, a cultural park was constructed by the Taiwanese Craft Research Institute in 1999, which then became a good place for recreation as well as craft exhibition and sale. Lacquerware is a carrier of cultural value and cannot be judged by its monetary value. It's rarely seen in the commodity markets. But this doesn't mean lacquer art has come to its end. That's not real. Lacquer hails from the Chinese mainland, Southeast Asia and Japan. Particularly, it has strong foundations in the Chinese mainland. This is its unique geographical advantage. A craft fades into history when nobody cares for its continuance. That would be a sad story. In addition, one can never gain access to the essence of the traditional craft without involving himself in the practical experience. Where does the beauty really dwell? We're usually out of words to describe the beauty of the utensils upon merely discerning their external features. Try to imagine the depth of feeling you might experience were you to take part in the creation process. In Nanto, every year between April and May, tongue trees all over the mountain blossom. When viewed from afar, it appears as if there was snow not long before. So the tongue tree flower is called the snow of May by Taiwanese people. Actually, I am a traditional woman. I want to handle both my career and my family well, so I'm constantly busy. I was born in the year of the ox. My mother used to say to me when she was still alive, I shouldn't have given birth to you at such an inopportune moment just before daybreak. You're born to work because you're a cow born at daybreak, so you are bound to be busy for the rest of your life. 